Good evening and welcome to New Jersey Associate of College Admission Counseling's Performing Arts Virtual College Fair. Thank you all for coming this evening to spend time with us. Please make sure that you have any questions at all during the presentations of the evening, that you put those questions in the Q&A button that you see below. Your camera and your microphone are off so presenters cannot see you or hear you as well. Remember after this event, there are other sessions going on this evening, so please come to those as well. This event also will be recorded. So if you want to hear more things down the road about these colleges, please check out the recordings of other ones that you'll have this evening. That's all from me. And I'm going to turn it over to our colleges of the evening. First, we're going to have Blooming Bloomfield College. Right. Good evening, everybody. And thank you once again for joining today's session. My name is Abby and I am a Bloomfield College admission counselor and I'll talk I'll be talking to you a little bit about Bloomfield College and a fun fact is I did graduate from Bloomfield class of 2018. So if you do have any questions in the end from like a perspective students point of view definitely feel free to ask me. So just some fun facts about Bloomfield College is that um, we're located in North Jersey for anybody who does not know, we're New Jersey's only predominantly black institution, Hispanic serving institution and minority serving institution. We're the uh, highest rank for social mobility in the state of New Jersey. We're number one in the state for moving students forward in associate economic status. And we are the 14th most diverse national liberal arts college. We're also a very small campus. Our class sizes ranges, our teachers, student to teacher ratio is 14 to one. So class sizes are as small as 14 students and go up to 25 the most. And most of our students at Bloomfield are first generation, meaning that they're the first or one of the first in their families to go to college. So these are all of the programs and majors that we offer at Bloomfield. It ranges from business to creative arts and technology, which is our second biggest program at Bloomfield. Under that, you have 3D animation, 2D and 3D expanded media. So if you're interested in like photography and filmmaking, graphic design, game design, music technology. So if you're interested in like being a producer, making beats, that kind of stuff. Game programming, we have education, um, early um, childhood education and secondary education, as well as special education, humanities. We have the natural science and mathematics. So that's like the pre-med um, students, math students, clinical lab sciences. We do have a joint program for that with Rutgers Newark. So if that's, if you're interested in like um, ultrasound tech, radiology, all of that fall under clinical lab sciences. And then we have nursing. Nursing is our top program that we offer at Bloomfield College. It's ranked one of the top 10 in the state of New Jersey. So we do have that. Um, we have that as a, um, the general four-year program. And then we also have the RN to BSN. So if you go to a community college first after you graduate from college and want to transfer over, we do have an accelerated program for you. And then we have the social and behavioral sciences. Sciences, so the psychology, sociology, criminal justice, public um, administration, human service studies. And then um, we have two five-year programs. All of our programs that I just mentioned here that you see on the screen, they're all four-year programs. But the only five-year program that we have is accounting and teaching, so education. So if you could choose to do a five-year track rather than four, so that means that when you graduate in five-year, you'll have both your bachelor's and your master's degree. So that's anyone interested in accounting and anyone interested in education. And then we do have certificates as well. So certificates are not um, degrees, but just if you wanna get a certification in court reporting, digital media, diversity training, network engineering, and supply chain management. So again, these are the programs and majors that we offer. We do allow students to double major. If you wanna major in one thing, minor in another, play around with it how you like, we do allow that at Bloomfield. And just student life, we are a division two school. So um, these are the sports that we have. It ranges from baseball, cross country, track, bowling, to even e-sports as well. And then we have over 30 clubs and organizations on campus, as well as 17 Greek organizations, fraternities, and sororities. So some of the resources that we have on campus is um, career development, advising. So our career development work closely with students to, um, you know, select internships. They help you with job 
placements, all of that. Internships start for our students as early as your sophomore year. And um, we have a lot of different services, health services, services for students with disabilities. So if you need special accommodations in and out of the classroom in residence halls, we allow that for you as well. We have the TRIO STARS program. So like I said, we're a big first generation school. So a lot of our students are the first or one of the first in their families to go to college. So that's just a support group that we have, honors program, EOF and LEAP. So we don't offer, um, so if we do have a special GPA requirement, but if you don't meet that requirement, there's still some options for you to get accepted through our summer programs. And we do have multiple different residence halls, many different options for students on campus, and each of them all have special accommodations. So how to get um, accepted, um, the application process for Bloomfield. So we have applications. You have to um, either apply through the Common App or directly on our Bloomfield College um, website. We require your um, high school transcript, two letters of recommendation. It could be from a teacher, coach, mentor, boss, if you work outside of school, a personal essay. And the good thing is that we're SAT and ACT optional. So that is not something that we're looking at. And the GPA requirement that we require is at least a 2.5. And like I said, even if you do fall a little bit below that requirement, we still have um, ways for you to get accepted through our summer programs. And financial aid, we're the most affordable private school in the state of New Jersey. 97% of our students receive um, financial aid and FAFSA. So I always tell students, um, October 1st is when it opens up for seniors, and this is our Bloomfield College code. And um, I always tell um, everyone that gets accepted into Bloomfield gets a scholarship. So that 2.5 GPA requirement starts you at an $8,000 scholarship. So it's like the higher GPA, the more money that you get. And this is my personal um, email and contact information. We do have a texting app that we use with our students. So if students will feel free to, um, you know, you can feel free to text me, shoot me an email, whichever one that you prefer. But if you have more questions, more inquiries about Bloomfield College, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much, Bloomfield. Thank you. Wonderful information. Next, we're gonna have Pace University. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining today. My name is Bridget, I work in undergraduate admissions at Pace. Um, so I'm gonna be talking to you a little bit about Pace University and what we have to offer. All right, so Pace University is a multi-campus university, which means we have two locations in New York, the first being in New York City. We're about a five to 10 minute walk from Wall Street and everything's pretty centralized in downtown Manhattan. So we do guarantee housing for all four years if students want to live on campus. We have two freshman residence halls and two upperclassmen residence halls. As long as you're submitting your housing deposit by May 1st, you are eligible to live on campus for all four years. In New York City, there's about 6,000 undergraduate students and about 1,000 graduate students that are working and being around campus there in New York City. About 45 minutes north of our West, or New York City campus is our Westchester campus. So that's a 200 acre campus, state of the art nature center, and it's also home to our division two sports teams. So this is more of your traditional college campus feel. And students do have access to come into New York City through the Pace Shuttle and the Metro North. So you're not too far away from New York City if you wanted to do an internship or if you just wanted to get back home to New Jersey, very easily accessible in Westchester as well. So what makes Pace unique? is something called the PACE Path. And that's a combination of customized, uh, of academics, mentorship and advising programs and internships. So you're gonna start out in a University 101 class and that University 101 class is going to be taught by your academic advisor. They're going to help you customize your four years, kind of make a plan to make sure you're maximizing your opportunities at PACE. That may mean an internship or doing a, a stage management position on Broadway, uptown, and maybe adding another major or minor just to make sure that you're market ready by the time you graduate, you have a resume and a cover letter built and you kind of know what's expected to you of you in your job field. So we have five undergraduate schools at Pace University. So we have 150 majors, accelerated bachelors and combined degree programs. So I'm really gonna focus on the Dyson College of Arts and Sciences, seeing that I would assume a lot of you are interested in performing in visual arts. So we do have a performing arts school in the Dyson College of Arts and Sciences. We also do have a visual arts program where you can do an art BA program, which is a Bachelor of Arts, and then an art BFA program, which is a Bachelor of Fine Arts. We also do have communications, uh, film and screen studies, and digital media as well. We also, I mean, like I said, we have five undergraduate schools. So there's the College of Health and Professions where you could do nursing and health science, Lumen School of Business, 
is marketing management accounting. Uh, School of Education is where you can learn how to be a teacher in the classroom. And then our Seidenberg School of Computer Science and Information Systems is our technology school on campus. The second pillar of the PACE path is our career services or internship program. We have one of the largest career services office in the New York metropolitan area, which generally means a typical PACE student has about three to five internships in the time they graduate with us. So like I said, market ready, they really do have the experience that they need to go into their field and know what's expected of them. Our career services office is coming to your university one-on-one -on -one class, that introduction to university life, making sure you're familiar with the area and getting you ready to get that internship as early as your sophomore year. But you can start working with them your freshman year, getting that resume built and getting ready to start applying for internships. During these times, financial aid is incredibly important, which is why we always encourage students to file the FAFSA. And I'm happy to say that about 95% of our first year students are receiving financial aid from PACE. Um, and that is, again, by filing the FAFSA, that will determine if you're eligible for any loans, grants, or work study opportunities. That wouldn't take away from any merit scholarship that you've already been awarded on your acceptance letter. So merit scholarship is based on the academic information we see on your application, and that can range from $13,000 all the way up to $29,000. So again, the higher GPA that you have or SAT scores if you choose to submit them, the higher merit scholarship you would be eligible for. Using that pace.edu slash calculator link is a really good resource to see what you can expect to receive from PACE down the line. So application requirements, we will ask for the application to be submitted on the Common App or the PACE application. We'll ask for your high school transcripts. We're generally looking at a GPA of a 3.3, which is an 88 or a B plus. Your SAT or ACT scores, PACE is test optional. So you do not have to submit your test scores if you've not had the opportunity to take them. But if you do, we're generally looking at an SAT score of an 1140 and an ACT of about a 23. Two letters of recommendation, again, um, like Abby said from Bloomfield, we're kind of looking at your teachers, high school counselors, boss if you've worked outside of school, somebody who can speak to your academic ability in the classroom kind of thing. And then your essay and your personal or your personal statement. And that's included, so nothing supplemental of what's asked for you on the Common App or the PACE application. So some important deadlines. These are from this past year, but it is important just to highlight if students are interested in applying for PACE's Performing Arts program, you are looking to hit two different deadlines. Um, the first being your academic application has to be submitted by December 15th, and then your Performing Arts application is due about a month later in January. We always encourage students to hit that early action deadline just to be sure that you kind of are starting off your second semester senior year um, with all of your applications in. So early action is non-binding. So just the benefit, like I said, of finding out a little bit earlier. And then our regular decision deadline is in February. And this is my information. If you have any questions, I work with students in Northern New Jersey. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to connect to you with, you know, connect you with other departments, schedule an on-campus tour, anything like that. And I'll put my contact information in the chat as well. Ace University, thank you so much. Remember during these um, sessions, if you have any questions, I'll please put the questions that you have for the college or any colleges in the Q&A section that we have this evening. Next up, we're going to have University of South Florida. Thank you. Let me get my screen. All right, well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending tonight. Um, we're gonna be talking about the University of South Florida. And just to introduce myself, my name is Christy Pugh. I'm a regional recruiter advisor. Um, I work with students in the Northeast Territories, uh, specifically New Jersey. I'm actually based out of New Jersey, so I'm not down in sunny Florida right now. I'm up here in the snow with you guys. Um, but just a little overview of USF. We are located in the greater Tampa Bay area. Uh, Tampa Bay experiences 246 days of annual sunshine. So it's just a really great place to be. Um, our university has 50,000 students on our campus. And though we are a very large university, we stay, still maintain an average class size of around 33 students. So small classroom sizes similar to what you see in high school. For diversity, 41.5% of our USF students are coming from diverse backgrounds, and we do have students from all 50 states and 141 different countries. Um, of that 50 states, our biggest out-of-state population is actually coming from New Jersey, so we see a lot of New Jersey students make their way down to Florida. And we do have over 200 majors and concentrations on our campus. So odds are whatever you're looking for, we probably have it on our campus. Uh, specific to the, if you're interested in performing in visual arts fields, we do have our College of the Arts on our campus that has a variety of different majors from 
art history, studio art, dance, music performance, and theater. So again, whatever it is you're looking for, we probably have it on our campus. We are America's fastest rising university. We are ranked number 46 by US News and World Report. And we are very proud of this fact. Um, fastest rising, what that means is if you look at the rankings 10 years ago and compare that to now, we have jumped quite a lot in the rankings and that's what makes us the fastest rising university. Um, in addition to that, we are a preeminent state research institution, which means that we are very research driven um, and our Florida Board of Governors recognizes that and provides us with additional funds to help our students with different student success initiatives, um, hiring prominent faculty members, reducing class size, and of course, helping our students participate in research and conduct their own research. Students could begin their research as soon as the second semester freshman year. So if you have an idea or you're curious about anything, talk to a professor, a faculty member, or we have our Office of Undergraduate Research whose whole purpose is to you know, help you conduct your research successfully. USF is one university geographically distributed. So when I say USF, University of South Florida, I'm referring to all three of our campuses. We have Tampa, uh, St. Petersburg, and Sarasota Manatee. Each campus offers something a little bit different, a little bit unique. Uh, Tampa, where lives live larger. You know, if you think big public research institution, probably thinking of our Tampa campus. St. Petersburg is a little bit smaller where city meets sand. It's right on the beach. So if that's more your vibe, maybe that's the campus for you. And we also have our Sarasota Manatee campus. That's the smallest of the three campuses and it only has a couple thousand students on our campus. You could choose whichever campus you want when you apply, you get to pick which one you want to attend. Oops, sorry, going back here. Um, in regards to student life, we do have over 700 student organizations ranging from Greek life um, all the way to smaller academic clubs. So definitely ways to get involved on campus and meet people. And we do have over a thousand on-campus events each year. So definitely have a lot of fun on campus in the picture there, that's our Bulls Unite Day. Um, and we are at NCAA Division I Athletics. So we play in the American Conference and we do share a stadium with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So we play in the Raymond James Stadium. That's actually where the Super Bowl was a couple weeks ago. Um, and all athletic events are free for students. And we do have recreation and intramural sports. So if you're interested in playing sports, but don't wanna play at a collegiate level, that might be more your speed. Um, and we do have a on-campus public. So if you've ever been down to Florida or been anywhere in the South, you know how important and how much we love our publics um, down in Florida. Now I'm gonna switch gears now and talk a little bit about our freshman admissions information. So our application is pretty straightforward. It just requires three things, um, a $30 application fee, your official high school transcript and your official ACT or SAT test scores. That's it. Um, our application is strictly academic based. So because of that, we do not consider any supplemental information. It's strictly based on the high school transcript and those test scores, but we do super score. For cost of attendance, um, just to give you an idea of our estimated cost for a non-resident, that would be a non-Florida resident, an out-of-state student, for your tuition and fees, housing and meals, books and supplies, and other, that's going to be around $34,000 for the academic year. And yes, that is a lot of money, but when you compare that to other out-of-state schools outside of New Jersey, our rates are extremely competitive. We have um, some of the lowest tuition costs in the country for both our in-state and our out-of-state students. But one of the ways in which you could offset that tuition cost is going to be through scholarships. And we do have admission scholarships for our students. Um, these are merit-based. So in order to qualify, you need the GPA and the test score and apply by the deadline. If you meet those qualifications, you're automatically going to get that scholarship. And just kind of winding down with some important dates and deadlines, our application opens on July 1 and you need to make sure you apply by January 1. Um, if you don't meet that January 1 priority deadline, it's totally fine. Just please make sure you apply by February 15th so that we can consider you for those admission scholarships. And then May 1 is that admissions deposit deadline. That's the last day for you guys to tell us, hey, I want to be a part of this Bulls family. So let us know before that date or on that date. And that's everything I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. This is my contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat um, or contact me at this information. So thank you guys and go Bulls. University of South Florida, thank you so much um, for information. Great thing as well. Next, we're gonna have Stevenson University. 
it's kind of hard to beat that. It's not um, sunny and warm over here in Maryland, but I'm Kayla Keegan. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Stevenson. I'm also the coordinator for our Visual Arts Scholarship. So I work very closely with the School of Design and Visual Arts students. I did want to start off with some quick facts about Stevenson, just to give you an idea of where we are and what we have to offer our students. So we're about 30 minutes um, outside of downtown Baltimore. And if you might know, Baltimore is a vibrant art community. So our students look to this area for internship experience and career placements. We are also a small community founded in the liberal arts. So that means that our class sizes are small too. Um, about 17 students on average are in a classroom. And that might be smaller depending on what your major is or what course you're actually taking. So whether it's remote, hybrid, or in-person classes, you're still able to connect with the professors, which we think is a great asset for our students. I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but all of our majors offer career exploration. Our goal is that students will get exposure to the field and be able to use those skills after graduation. We're also a diverse campus as well. We have people from all backgrounds, cultures, and lifestyles. And it's kind of a great creative space for our students to engage and interact with people from all different lifestyles. Lastly, um, even though we are a small school, we do have a number of majors, tracks, and focus areas for our students to choose from. So say you did want to pursue a minor or a track that would enhance the value of your skills, you could definitely do that. So I'm going to focus on the majors that fall within the performing and visual arts spectrum at Stevenson. It is theater and media performance, fashion design, graphic design, film and moving image, and music as a minor. So we are a small school, so the, the majors that fall within uh, the PVA spectrum are the ones listed there. So we know how it is when parents hear that their child wants to pursue an art degree, the kind of perception of, you know, starving artists, will you be able to get a job? We understand that this perception is very real when it comes to performing arts. And so we've taken this perception and we've made it into a strength. And the way that we do this is we approach it by providing our students with exceptional experiences grounded in hands-on learning. So what does this look like? For our fashion design students, in the past, our students have attended Fashion Week in New York City every single year. And not just attended, but they've also actually created garments to showcase their designs on the runway. We're centrally located to um, Baltimore, as I mentioned before, but what's in Baltimore? The Under Armour facility warehouse is actually in Baltimore. So our students are able to pursue career, internship, and learning opportunities at their design warehouse, which is pretty cool. In our theater major, um, our students are able to have leading roles as freshmen, because what we care about is the talent that a student is bringing to the stage rather than seniority. Given our smaller community, students in this major have really great opportunities for exposure earlier on. We also prepare our theater students for their future through career preparation. They take classes on how to market themselves as actors, acting for the camera, and voice acting. These classes help to increase their marketability after graduation. So when parents say, oh, you're not gonna, we have a, we have a solution for that. And the same goes for our graphic design and film majors. Students are writing, working on films and projects early in the major. We want them to hit the ground running. We are uh, located right down the street from Maryland Public Television. Television, excuse me. That's a local station and it's known as MPT, but film students are able to gain internship experience working there. In the past, students have taken trips to festivals such as South by Southwest Festival. Again, the focus is providing our students with exceptional experiences that expand outside the classroom as well as hands-on learning opportunities. As mentioned earlier, um, I'm the coordinator for the Visual Arts Scholarship. So we award up to six scholarships to students in each of the three majors that are listed there, fashion design, film and moving image, and graphic design. 
The requirements, thankfully, um, for this scholarship are the same, no matter which of these three majors you're interested in. So we're looking for a portfolio submission that showcases the diversity and strength of your work. <clears throat> it is a $2,000 scholarship and the requirement is a portfolio submission and the deadline is January 15th. So I know that we'll have question, time for questions at the end, but if you do have questions that you think of after the session is over, take a screenshot of my contact information in case you need to reach out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Stevenson University. That was great information. Thank you for sharing with us as well. All right, remember once again, if you do have questions, as we said earlier, just put those in the Q&A area and the colleges will definitely be happy to answer those as we continue on this evening. Next, um, Full Sail University. Full Sail University, are you here? Yes, hi, thank you so much. Wonderful, uh, thank you for coming. Share your screen and you're good to go. Okay, great. So my name is Victoria Bracey. I work at Full Sail University. We are located in Winter Park, Florida. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys now to showcase a video about Full Sail. Sorry guys, I just saw that you couldn't hear her, so I'm going to go ahead and stop my video and share one more time. These items are included into How does it work? Our curriculum is accelerating. That means that full sales degrees take about half the time to complete compared to a traditional university. Since you won't be in school as long, you'll need to fund fewer years of housing and living expenses. At traditional universities, books and supplies can be a major educational cost. At Full Sail, these items are included in tuition. Full Sail's degree programs start every month, so you don't need to wait for the fall to begin your education. Unlike most universities, Full Sail's tuition is set for the duration of your program and doesn't rise from semester to semester. After you graduate, you can return to Full Sail and take a current course within your degree program to keep your skills up to date. Okay.
Okay, so that was just a little bit about Full Sail. Uh, like you saw, uh, we are an accelerated program. So instead of four years for your bachelor's, it's only about two years for your master's. Uh, we also are a 24 seven campus, which means that students have classes on Saturdays. They have them at 2 a.m. They have them at three in the afternoon. And the reason for that is because we really want to mirror the industry. We are an entertainment, media and arts based school, which means that our students are learning behind the scenes of the entertainment industry. So instead of learning how to record uh, themselves as a music artist, they're learning how to record others and do the editing for it. Uh, instead of being the actor or actresses for film, they're learning how to do camera work, lighting, uh, special effects, makeup. Now, what's really cool about our programs is that we encourage our students to work together because out in the industry, no one person does it all. So where you may be studying something like film, we're going to encourage you to reach out to a music student to work on the sound effects. We're going to encourage you to reach out to an animation student to work on your special effects. We do also have a rolling admissions, which means our students are starting every single month and they're graduating every single month. Uh, so whenever you're ready to jump in, we're ready to catch you. Uh, we also have a great career development department that touches base with all of our students before they graduate to make sure not only that they're ready for those interviews with their resumes and interview skills, but also connect them with uh, industry professionals that are ready to talk to them about how to best get their foot in the door. The other thing that I want to touch base with everyone is we do have a great behind the scenes tour that I highly recommend. I'm going to go ahead and put that link here in the chat just so that it's available to you guys. We also have a daily tour available if you guys wanted to check that out. It's not just a tour of our campus, it's also a tour of our culture to really give you a taste of what Full Sail is all about. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to put those questions in the Q&A session. Uh, but that's, that's all I got for right now. Thank you so much, Full Sail. Next, we're going to have High Point University. All right, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Ryan. I work as uh, one of the senior admissions counselors for High Point University. Uh, High Point U University is a small to medium sized school uh, out in North Carolina, so about an eight hour drive from uh, the cold Northeast right now. Uh, we are getting some of that snow, but it's not as bad. Uh, here in the in North Carolina, uh, we have about 5,000 students with 6,000 rounding out with our graduate students coming out. Uh, so about 5,000 undergraduate students with an incoming class about 1,200 students per incoming freshman class. Uh, we have students coming from all 50 states and 37 different countries here to High Point. So we have a very diverse campus. Uh, we try to make sure that students are coming from all different backgrounds and different. Uh, opportunities so that it, you are getting the full experience while you're here. Uh, for our performing and visual arts students, these are our top majors that we offer. We offer one of the top interior design programs in the country. Uh, we have one of the uh, a fantastic fashion merchandising and design program, a BA in dance, uh, a performance and collaborative theater BA, as well as BFA. Uh, we also have a music uh, BA and BFA, uh, graphic design as well, and studio art. Uh, for our students, but this is just in our performing and visual arts uh, department. We have 60 majors and 70 minors for our students to be able to interchange and inter be interdisciplinary. So you can have a, a biology course with being able to be a double major in biology and dance. Uh, students are able to do that and professors actually want them to be able to do that and be as well-rounded as they want to be. We have an amazing education here at the at High Point University. Uh, we have a 15 to 1 faculty to student ratio with 100% of our, our classes being taught by faculty. So we don't have any TAs or graduate students teaching these classes. You are getting it straight from the professors. Uh, we have 80% uh, of our uh, professors have their terminal degree, which means that they have the highest degree within their field, making sure that you are getting the most knowledge you possibly can when building those relationships with those professors, as well as we have a four-year graduation guarantee for every single major except our doctorate in pharmacy, which is a 2-4 program. Uh, we have a tuition-free fifth-year master's program that we're able to offer for our students this year in business and communication leadership. So that means going throughout your four years here at High Point University 
he's studying even uh, interior design, fashion merchandising design, you would be able to get a master's in business and communication leadership for uh, your tuition free uh, for your fifth year, which is pretty amazing, as well as success coaches that are helping you bridge the gap between senior year of high school to freshman year of college by helping you choose courses, getting you involved on campus, uh, as well as making sure that you are going after every opportunity that you have available here at High Point. We have some amazing facilities that we're able to offer for our students. This is just one of them. This is our planetarium. It's the second largest in North Carolina, and we're really excited to be able to partner with our uh, performing and visual arts programs to be able to put on uh, different performances to different space themes. You can see here, this was actually uh, one of the projects that students are able to do. Uh, we actually have a full grand piano in that building so that students are able to accompany music programs and, and concertos with what they're seeing on, on the screen. But we also have a fantastic planetarium as well as a conservatory for our students that are studying earth sciences. Um, and what we really focus on here at High Point is to make sure that you are getting access to these innovators. So being able to work with people like Steve Wozniak, who's on the bottom right hand corner of your screen, or Mark Randolph, who's on the top left, who is the co-founder of uh, Netflix and Steve Wozniak being the co-founder of Apple, making sure that you're getting access to people that are the best in their field, not only in the classroom, but in real life as well. Um, in our performing and visual arts programs. We've had opportunities to work with Tony Award winning composer Charles Strauss, who wrote Annie and Bye Bye Birdie and has worked with our students doing different uh, vocal courses, doing different directorial courses. Um, and he's been able to really help partner well with the university. And each department has somebody like that, graphic and visual design, as well as interior design has the editor in chief of the interior design magazine, who is the uh, head of that program. So what we want for our students is to be able to have that development of life skills, have that availability of, okay, this is what it's going to take to be able to get a job in the performing arts. How do I market myself? How do I have my headshots? How do I have to make sure that my resume shows the different roles that I've able, I'm able to have here at the University of High Point? We allow students of any background, if for any major, to be able to audition for any of our shows. We have two main stage theater shows, usually musicals, uh, on our main uh, stage and our Hayworth Fine Arts Center. And then we also have a black box theater that puts on uh, student performances and as well as student directed plays. Uh, we are really excited about being able to do those different programs. Even while uh, COVID has been going on, our theater program has still been able to go and uh, perform, which is fantastic. And we are currently all in campus right now. So no virtual classes either. And then we really hope and try to model values and build character here at HPU. Uh, we had 110,000 hours of community service last year, as well as we have the MLK Day of Service, where our students don't get off of classes, but instead are very highly recommended to go and to uh, give that extra um, time to developing the local community and giving back. Um, so it's an extremely awesome uh, program that it's one of my favorites. Uh, so if you are looking to come to High Point, we highly recommend scheduling a visit. Uh, we look for about a 3.2 to 3.3 GPA, and we are test optional. So any of those test scores aren't going to be looked at for even some of our scholarships. Uh, this year, we were able to offer uh, 100 full tuition scholarships, even for students that did not include their test scores. So we were really excited to be able to offer that amazing opportunity for students. But if you have any questions, please let me know. This is my contact information and I also can put it in the chat as well. Uh, I would be happy to answer any of your questions, but I'll throw it back to John for the rest of the, the presentation. Thank you guys. High point, thank you so much. Uh, now for our panelists, we're gonna go through at least two questions and you all can just answer the questions in the order um, that you presented this evening and just kind of share with us some great insight about um, what you can help us as well with, that'd be wonderful. All right, first question, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Great. So good evening again, everyone. This is at from Bloomfield. So the advice that I would give to um, someone going through the college search process is to definitely take advantage of 
all the um the virtual resources, virtual engagement, virtual activities that are happening right now. I know in this pandemic and this virtual world that's happening, unfortunately, not a lot of schools are doing like in campus, like in person tours. Everything is doing everything is happening on a virtual platform. And I know like admissions all across the nation, they're doing so much activities, there's so much engagement, so much to get involved with, like connecting with different schools through admissions. So I would definitely say get engaged, get active, like you know, visit all these virtual tours, visit all these virtual virtual events that are happening and you know just like as in person like it's not the same experience unfortunately but the more you get engaged with these schools the more that connection will hit and definitely pay attention to your interests if, even if you're an undeclared undecided see which schools have your interests that you could potentially major in so make sure you do all your research in that to see like are these schools offering what you're interested in and definitely get engaged to, just see which school that you connect with to definitely see if you see yourself being a future student there so thank you. Yeah, I mean, you totally hit the nail on the head there, Abby. I think it was 100% that is the answer. Um, get engaged, making sure that you're taking advantage of all the virtual opportunities. Of course, it's not ideal. Um, you may not be able to physically travel to see the campus, but it is really a great opportunity to ensure that you are getting connected with other students. And the other one is just taking a breath, making sure you're taking time for yourself. Um, it's very stressful, especially again now. Um, not being able to see what's going on, but knowing that there's a lot of people that are here to help you, especially us in admissions, we're definitely happy to help. Um, my advice to students who are on their college search process, I would definitely say um, staying connected to your regional recruiter or your state's recruiter, um, whoever that may be, they are a great contact person for you. It can really help you with any questions that you may have along the way. Um, and also staying connected on social media. All, I would say almost all universities and colleges now have social media and they have like student takeovers and stuff. So that's a really great way to learn more um, about the school. I would definitely springboard off of what Christy said. Um, if you can link up with your the college that you're really interested in and link up with their ambassadors or their current students, sometimes current students can give you the real low low on what a college is like. Um, and that can be, I think, a little bit more uh, beneficial for students who are going through this virtual you know, search process. I mean, we, we all do a great job at what we do, but sometimes getting all the information can start to blend together. So reaching out and connecting with an actual person, like Christy said, whether that's a student or, you know, an admissions counselor, that can kind of make or break it for you when it comes to the search process. Those are all really great points. I would also say just try to pay attention to what resonates with you. It's really easy to get caught up in the name of a school. Uh, maybe you have legacy parents and they really want you to go to where they went to school. But what you need to focus on is what you want out of your future and make sure that the school that you're looking at is gonna help you get there. Yeah, for sure. I would say that all of that is amazing advice. Uh, I think what I get to say is going last is I get to say everybody did a great job. Um, but also, but it's true. It's reaching out to your admissions counselor because we're a counselor for a reason. We're there to help you out for a reason. So make sure that you're asking those questions, even if you think that they're dumb questions, they're ones that we know the answer to so that we don't have to worry for you to be stressed out and uncomfortable and not know and not feel right. Uh, and then that's also another thing, make sure you're having that feel, make sure that that is sitting well with you no matter where you can, if you can get on campus, get on campus. But like Abby said, if use the virtual options, use the pictures, use the virtual tours that they have available um, and make sure that you're getting a sense of where you're going to be spending four or, or more years so that you can actually feel like you're getting the most out of your college experience. The last question for the evening we're going to have is give us an interesting fact about your school. All right. So an interesting fact about Bloomfield is that um, people always ask us all the time, are we an HBC? You know, we're the only predominantly black institution in the state of New Jersey, a minority serving institution and Hispanic serving institution, even though we started as a Presbyterian church. So that is a fun fact about Bloomfield.
That's really cool. I actually didn't know that. And I pass by the Moonfield all the time. Um, for Pace, we have one of the tallest residence halls actually in the Western Hemisphere. So um, we have really beautiful views of the Brooklyn Bridge and uh, the World Trade Center. So that's our fun fact. Um, I would say our fun fact is that we are actually a relatively young university. Um, we were founded in 1956, so we are a young and spry 65 years old, which again is really young for other public universities. Um, our fun fact, oh, but before I do it, I want to say that Christy was probably the most retweeted in that in our last response to all the questions. So props to Christy, um, but. <laughs> Our fun fact is that our training and athletic facilities were actually previously used by the Baltimore Ravens, who were formerly known as the Colts way back when. So we took it over from the Baltimore Ravens and we have their old training and athletic facilities. Uh, our fun fact is that because of our uh, relationship with some of the entertainment professionals out in the industry, uh, we've been able to be the home for the WWE NXT performance. Uh, so whenever you see them on TV, uh, they're actually on our campus. Um, wow, I had to, all that time and I was still kind of blanking on, on a fun fact. Um, I would say that the most fun fact is that uh, instead of being more of a focused university for us uh, in, in education, we're more of a life skills university, making sure that over the four years, students are getting that opportunity to be able to get their majors uh, figured out, even so much so that one of our students on our basketball team is now a Harlem Globetrotter. So he's been able to perform all over the country and all over the world as one of the, the uh Harlem Globetrotter, so shout out Corey Law. Wonderful facts from everyone. Thank you so much. Now this ends and concludes this session of the Virtual College Fair for Performing Arts. So if you finish up and want to go to another session, there'll be other ones this evening as well. Remember this one will be recorded. When you exit out, there will be a quick survey that you'll fill out for us as well. But other than that, um, thank you presenters for coming to spend time with us this evening. Um, attendees, thank you for coming as well. And we'll definitely see you around again really, really soon. Everyone have a great evening.